Hello everybody and welcome to your next C Sharp XNA platform and tutorial. Uh, so just to begin, if you were getting errors or something on your player class from the last tutorial when you're trying to load the map, um, then just um, just comment this, just comment it out or whatever. Um, we'll we'll fix that later on. Okay. So in this tutorial, we're just gonna be talking about motion. So uh, with what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our tile.cs and so we're gonna create an update method right now. So we're gonna say public void update and we're gonna update it accordingly. So what we're gonna do uh, to start things off is we're going to create a boolean called increase and in the set tile we're going to just set it to true by default okay uh so what we're going to do is we're going to say that if motion is equal to motion dot horizontal then we're going to do stuff right um but what we're going to do is we're going to say um up here we're going to say counter plus equals and we'll say or just counter plus plus now you can do your counter in many ways you can do your counter in terms of seconds so you can use a time span or or anything that you'd want to use your counter for right your counter doesn't have to just add by one because when you add it by one then uh, depending on the user's com the computer speed or something it could be um it could be different right so uh i guess it would I don't know you could use time span or anything you want right but for the sake of this tutorial I'm just gonna use counter or whatever so I'm gonna say uh, if counter is greater than or equal to range uh, then counter equals zero okay and set the increase equal to not increase so if increase is equal to true then it will set to false and if it's false then it will set it to true okay so in here we're just gonna say that if increase is true then position dot X and we got to set a move speed so move speed we'll just set a default move speed to 100 and there's a lot of cool things you can probably do with this. You can probably load, you can, if you want to, you can load the move speed from a text file or something, right? And then from that, if say you have something that slows that, like makes you go in slow motion or makes the game world go in slow motion, you can modify the move speed in the text file to make all the tiles go in slow motion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, there's, there's different things you can do. But anyways, we'll just set a uniform move speed for now. So we're gonna say if increase is true, then position x plus equals move speed times float game time elapsed game time total seconds else position x minus equals and so on and so forth. So we're just gonna do that for the x and uh, for the x coordinate right now. So let's uh, test this out. Um, just to see if this works. So we gotta go to our layer class. We gotta create an update. Got our game time, and we're gonna do, you know what, to save myself time, I'm just gonna do two for loops, same for loops as the draw command. Okay, this is probably not gonna save me any time at all, uh, but I guess whatever. What's done is done. So anyways, we're going to say tiles IJ update and put the game time in there. So let's go to our map and we'll just put layer dot update in there. So we got an error. Oh, silly error for me. And as we can see, the the tiles aren't moving at all. 
so that means there's something wrong with our layers and the way that we're actually loading this in so let's see if this actually it reaches here in our code so it, it doesn't actually reach uh, this area of our code and I believe I know why so even though we're using the for each statement right we're still looping through um we're still looping through the list right so it's no different than saying if motion dot contains whatever right it's just a longer way of doing it right so um what we can do is well there, there's there's several things so one thing we can do is we'll just say that uh, we can make another I guess we can use get motion so get motion is equal to m dot split right and we can split the colon out here so we'll just say that if get motion zero is equal to content I K so it will get the what it will do is it will get this value right here see if it's equal to I K and then it will assign a value to it okay so we don't need, really need to even do this right here so we can delete that so let's test this out one more time see if it even reaches this area of the code so yes it does okay so let's see if our tiles start moving so we've got something we've got some progress but our tiles aren't indeed moving so let's go in let's let's go in here so um let's see if it actually reaches inside here in our code so it does reach in here we modify our position but the problem is that we're not modifying our animation position so we're modifying the tiles position but it's not going to show up in the game world because we're not updating the animations position so we'll just say animation dot positions equal to position. Let's run that again. And as we can see, we got some moving tiles and they move according to. So when the counter reaches the range, then it will basically change direction. Okay. So it bounces back and forth, right? So we got some moving tiles that way. And this kind of looks awkward all with all the moving. But the good thing is that, remember, each tile is its own separate instance. So you can set one tile to go a certain range, another tile to go another range, and so on. So it doesn't really look like it's all moving all at once like that. But I'm just showing you how to implement movement in it. And it's up to you how you want to do it. So we can have another else, we'll have an else if, and we'll just say motion.vertical. And we'll just do the same thing. So if increase, and else if position.y minus equals move speed. Oh man, I can't even type right now. Okay, so let's go to our map one. Change it to vertical. And as you can see, it does some vertical movement. So that's pretty, that's pretty cool. Now, I, I'm just going to end that tutorial there so you can have some fun with that. You can add in a bunch of different motions. So if you want to do like a sine wave motion or if you want to do like so any type of motion you want to do you can add it in do it you can even make a motion animation class to handle the different types of emo um the different type of motions um it's up to you to customize it any way you want to but that is it for this tutorial don't forget to comment rate and subscribe hope you enjoyed it and that's it for now so bye